What's up guys? If you're new here, my name is Dom. I'm Anaya. And welcome to Faith Family Homestead. Today we are outside in the garden. Haven't been in the garden in, I don't know, maybe a week or two because it's been cold, it's been rainy, cloudy, which makes it even colder. And so I've been inside handling inside projects like getting my kitchen organized and stuff. But today's a nice sunny day. It's only gonna get as high as 50, which is not super, you know, cold, not super hot either. But with the sun out, it makes it feel really good. And so I decided that we were going to work in the garden today. There's still some stuff in the garden that I need to get done before spring comes. Last year, I used these containers, these totes, to plant stuff in them. And this year, I don't need them. The girls are taking out all of the um, straw that was in there. And then we're going to use the soil that was in there to fill this garden bed we have here. That's the same thing we did with the pool we had i planted sweet potatoes in there and ginger and i thought i had harvested all the sweet potatoes but there were still some sweet potatoes in there so my girls just brought that inside but now we're going to add this uh, soil in here as well we might have to top it up top it off with an extra bag of soil but just reusing this soil and we'll just have to add nutrients into it so this is the area right here where i want to work on today getting the landscape fabric down we already have two rows but then we ran out of this four foot wide landscape fabric right now what i have right now is this five foot one it's the fabric that i used down here because the four foot was just a little bit too short and so what i did was instead of cutting it and leaving all the extra i left the extra and just didn't uh staple it down so that way i'm going to come in here because i have also have a three foot i have this three foot landscape fabric that i'm using to go in the rows i also used it to go down the sides where it was only 30 inches wide and i'll just be able to overlap this overage right here with because i think this pathway is only 30 inches wide some changes that i've talked about but i didn't technically show i don't think were that landscape fabric over on that side my son and i did the landscape fabric uh, over here on this side we extended this pathway right here we're going to take down this cattle panel fencing and replace it i don't know with netting and add one more t-post right here so that instead of it being 32 feet it would be about 40 feet and i'm gonna use this area to plant cherry tomatoes in the spring i watched a video from haas tools about two years ago where they used the same netting that i have and he trellised uh, cherry tomatoes and so this is where i'm gonna have my cherry, cherry tomatoes planted at it's just cheaper than buying another cattle panel and then cutting it in half to extend that space I've had that fabric from uh, earlier in the spring where I wanted to use it to trellis things, but I just never got around to it. And so I'm going to make that a priority and get that fence, uh, get that fencing switched out. I can use the cattle panels to make more arch trellises, um, or I could just use it for another project that we have around here because arch or these cattle panel trellises have went up so much. One of the things that I need to do in order to lay down this landscape fabric, which is why I haven't done it already, is because I have roses that I planted in ground. So there's about 10 roses all around here, but then I changed my mind and decided that I wanted to put raised beds here. And so I'm going to plant the roses inside the raised beds, but in order for me to fill them, I need to take dig out the roses and then replant them once I fill the beds. And then also, I want the landscape fabric to go kind of underneath the, um, what is this called? these containers these metal beds um if you speaking about metal beds if you are interested forever garden beds uh are having a bogo sale for christmas and so if you buy one of these metal raised beds which is what i have i just spray painted them you get another one half off i let anaya finish digging out the roses and i got the five foot landscape fabric to start rolling out this is definitely one of the things that if I had to do over, I would have definitely put down landscape fabric throughout this whole garden before putting it together. Um, I just thought that I was going to keep up with um, the wood chips and that was not the case. We live uh, further out into the country than we did before, where as in my old uh, house that we had in the garden, I was able to get lots and lots of wood chips to keep up with uh, the weeds coming through the pathways. But I do like this way better so that um, it would give it a more... Um, a better look with the rocks down I think it would look really pretty and definitely hold the weeds uh, together I didn't know if there was gonna be certain spots that I was going to have like in-ground beds as well and so I know over time wood chips break down and then you're able to use that ground 
and so that was one of the other reasons that I wanted to use wood chips in case I wanted to change the design of the garden but as I've used it for this past spring and summer I think I actually like the way it's set up and so I'm going to go ahead and lay this fabric down everywhere and make it more permanent by adding the rocks which I think will look really beautiful and really um, allow the beds and the shape of the garden to pop because especially in the summer when nothing's really growing in the garden beds you could b barely see the difference between <laughs> the pathways and the garden beds when everything is kind of beige and dead um, <laughs> so I think having you know the pathways with um, the rocks is going to look really good this spot that we're working up working on up in the front is where I want to eventually probably have a gazebo and then a maybe bistro table like I've seen one a pioneer woman one in Walmart at the end of last garden season that I didn't get but I regret it because I want it so I probably if I see it again this year I'll get it or another one like it just a really pretty um set where it has two um chairs and then maybe like a gazebo or something umbrella to help with the sun in the summer because that was one of the things in the summer when it was over 100 degrees and the sun was so hot I wasn't really out here during the you know the heat of the day but if I had an um, or umbrella I think that would um look really nice as well as giving me shade and so I think that was uh one thing on my list that I'm going to do as far as going into next spring is definitely getting this sp spot right here that we're working on with an umbrella or gazebo and then chairs just to have a nice seating area I still also have to fill these metal raised beds and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to fill them as far as with some kind of soil. I did run out of wood chips that I was using to um, fill the bottom of some of the raised beds but I still have probably you know 10 to 15 more beds that I need to fill and I'm just not sure. We do have lots of leaves which is what I filled most of my um, wood inside beds when I started building them last year. I put leaves at the bottom of them. And so I could, you know, get gather leaves around the property, but that is a much um, fluffier material than wood chips. Wood chips are more sturdy and leaves you would need much more and then they go down, condense, and smush a lot easier than, than wood chips. So still not sure, but still thinking about it. I, I know I've read some um, comments on some of my videos when I mentioned it about, you know, adding topsoil and then cardboard and then good soil on top, which I think is a really good idea but um even nowadays topsoil is expensive and so i may end up going to and get bulk soil again um but i'm just not sure when i bought bulk soil topsoil last year i think i bought 10 loads and it was about 500 dollars. and i could go that route and you know fill a good amount maybe one third of the beds with um topsoil and then just get bag soil to put on top because the compost that i got from the place last year came infested with grubs and if you know that story from last year when I struggled with all those grubs I don't want to do that again so I would definitely uh, go with the bag soil. Okay so for the most part we have our landscape fabric completely put down. Um, this is where we're stopping at. I didn't go all the way underneath the beds because this is going to be filled up with this is a 17 inch bed and so I'm not worried about weeds coming through that high. So we ended up using two more five foot and then this three foot right here, which stopped at this yellow bed. I realized I had two more forever garden beds that I needed spray paint. I have the paint for it. I just haven't done it yet. All of the roses, my daughter was able to get up all but two and then I helped her with the other two. So that now they're in this pot until we get these filled up with soil. So the plants that are out here now are these two plants from Stock Bros that I have to uh, get new plants because those are dead. I have elderberries right here. One of them is dead as well, but three, the other three are alive. I have all of my blackberries in here. There is one grape in here. This is all the blueberries. And then this is uh, some more blackberries and those are mulberries. So the last parts of the garden that we need to landscape fabric would be this part and then all of the pathways. So these will all be three foot piece strips. My son is going through the pathways and digging out all of like this grass. We've already done it. So this is dead grass that we've dug out to lay down this fabric, but he'll take out like the fresh grass right here before we lay down the landscape fabric. So in the long run or long term, I do want to have rocks a place wherever the landscape fabric's at. While we're out here and this fabric is all the way put down, which is so exciting, 
let's go up to the front and I'm going to show you some of the cabbages. Some of the cabbages that are up there have gotten huge. So for the most part, this broccoli has gone to seed and it's flowering and I'm letting it. It looks lovely. I am going to plant another round of broccoli, but not right now. But this cabbage right here, it's huge. This one I have, it's really big. I have another one right here. I think this is a Copenhagen. This one's a little smaller. But then I also saw that I had some cauliflower forming and that's so cool this one's a big one i think i'm gonna end up picking some of these so all of these in the center are cauliflowers and then on the edges i do have some rock uh cabbages this one and that one is eaten up but everything else is looking really good yeah there's a bigger cauliflower head in here oh and there's a bug hiding so this definitely got mixed up that is a brussels sprout and it's planted here like it's a cabbage or a broccoli but it's not it's a brussels sprout Awesome. So what I'm going to do with this cabbage is take out these outer leaves and just put them right where this cabbage was planted. Actually, this is called a Charleston Wakefield cabbage. So that's awesome. You can eat cabbage leaves. I'm not going to eat these. I'm just going to compost them right in place to feed this soil and provide a weed barrier. <laughs> that looks really good. I think that weighs like I don't know. Three to five pounds. What do you think this would? I think like three and a half. Go away and see. Okay, we're gonna get this other one right here. Again, I'm just gonna take out the outer leaves. Oh, there's a lot of damage on this one. So this one actually has, I think it's actually eaten up pretty good. I can actually give this one to my chickens and they can peck at it. So this first cabbage, my son just went to weigh it and he said it was 3.2. I am going to go in with this cabbage. Oh, just looking at the garden right now, all the landscape fabric, it just looks so good. And I cannot wait to have the rest of the pathways down completed. As you can see, my son did finish getting the weeds out. And so these little pathways are the last pathways that needs fabric. It makes the garden look completely different. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.